Hi, I'm Liam Phillips, I'm 27 years old. I've been former world champion, current World Cup champion, competed at both Beijing and London Olympics, and this is part of my story towards Rio 2016. We're here in Manchester, this is my home. Although I didn't grow up here, it's somewhere that I've relocated to further my BMX career. I dreamt of growing up in California and riding my bike and doing the American series. All of a sudden, I'm here in Manchester training in an indoor facility. First and foremost, I, I ride bikes because I love it, and that hasn't changed since the first day that I started. Now, I've had some struggles along the way, and obviously, you know, as with many sports, it's not a, a straightforward road. I started playing team sports like football, and if we won as a team or if we lost, I would be happy with that, but it would frustrate me massively when I was turning myself inside out to try and deliver the best for the team, and I'm stood there next to players that, yeah, just really didn't care, and that was something that I found really, really difficult. BMX for me, I love how individual it is. Everything rests on my shoulders. I like that competitive nature between one rider to another. It's a point A to point B. You know, who gets there the fastest, you know, and you can replicate that with your friends out on the street doing a sprint. That's something that I really, really enjoyed was the competitive nature of just trying to race. So I started racing at five years old just because I love riding a bike. It was dead simple for me. I was introduced by a friend. I went to my local BMX track pretty much. He went there every week since, and that led to me competing regionally in the UK, then competing nationally and then internationally. And so my very first memory of, of racing away from the track that I learned to ride BMX, yeah, wasn't a very good one. I actually turned up to the track. I had all the kit, I looked the part, and I just said, no, I can't do it because the starter was too high. At 16, 17, 18 years old, you understand that you, know, you need to be stronger and you need to be more powerful to, to get a good start. And a lot of my training focus went away from the bike and into other forms of training, like strength training and, and gym training. And I learned very, very quickly that, okay, I was able to produce more power and be stronger on the bike, and therefore I was faster. I was nowhere near as good technically. And within sort of six months of racing in the junior ranks, I crashed and had surgery on my shoulder. I was getting faster, but I almost didn't know how to control that speed. Unfortunately, I found out the hard way. I've had I think, five or six shoulder surgeries now and certainly had my fair share of injuries. I didn't have a, a surgery-free season for five years. I was super, super lucky to have a really supportive family. They provided me with you know, the assistance to go to these races, not just around the country, but also traveling all over the world. time things changed, BMX became an Olympic sport. With that, Brit Cycling took BMX under their umbrella and all of a sudden my focus did shift slightly and, and I could turn this hobby, per se, into, into a career here in the UK. So I left school and basically moved to Manchester as soon as I could. When BMX was first introduced to the Olympics, everything was up in the air. Nobody knew what to expect from the Olympic Games. You know, from British cycling standpoint, they saw me as a 19-year-old at the time, and it was my future development towards gold at an Olympic Games at some point in the future. I obviously went to Beijing as an extremely young athlete. I never thought that I'd go and win a medal or make the final. The race was, for me, almost like secondary to the actual experience. You are in a bubble, it's, and it's just completely different to anything else you'd ever experience. I know the dining hall in London was capable of seating 12,000 people. My dinner table can seat six. People can say, yeah, it's just a bike race and you do everything that you've done, but I think that that's so much easier said than done until you've actually been there and experienced it yourself. 
I'm so grateful to have had that experience prior to London because it certainly yeah, gave me a, a big leg up. Coming off the back of Beijing, you know, myself and Grant, my coach, we realised quite early on that, you know, in, in simple terms, you've got four years, but you need to take five steps. So if you take one step every year, you're going to fall short. We actually sacrificed quite a lot, pretty much all of 2009, yeah, most of 2010 really, just due to trying to make gains in other areas. In the wider spectrum, you know, that was something that I needed to do. So I raced 2009, 2010, and then 2011 was the year that I, I didn't race at all. Um, I crashed the very, very first race, and then I raced track, you know, did track cycling for, for that eight months. I was presented with an opportunity to train on the velodrome within the Great Britain cycling team and to be honest that was something that was massively appealing to me just because I was sick of getting hurt all the time. I think that time away made me realise why I do BMX and that's going right back to those early days of just enjoying riding my bike and I wasn't having that same enjoyment going around in circles and you know, not being disrespectful to track cycling but it's, it's not BMX. Within a few months, I knew that BMX was going to be calling my name again. Going into 2012, when I come back from track, you know, we had a, we looked at the, the top five of BMX in the world. You, know, you had guys like Joris, Connor, Sam, Maris, and Mark Willers. You know, they, were, they were the five guys that were really dominating the sport at that time. And, I wanted to break into that, I wanted to be one of those guys, so that for me was you know, how do I go about that and set a plan as to, to try to make that happen and coming into 2012, you know, those races I felt like I had, you know, I, I sort of bridged the gap and, and was capable of being in that group. Obviously injuries do play a massive part in our sport and over time I have been resilient and I have learned to deal with those injuries. And, you know, I crashed 10 weeks before London was carried out of the arena at the World Championships on a spinal board with broken collarbone and shoulder blade and unfortunately it is part of our sport and something that everybody does experience at some point. Heading into London I had this four-year plan and I felt like I was competitive and that was you know, I guess the biggest challenge. I had surgery 10 weeks prior which it's not ideal prep. I was there, I was in with a shot and I had a, a great start in the final and I made some mistakes. You know, I didn't walk away with the medal, but you know, I gave it a pretty good go. Every day since coming back to BMX, I've worked towards being successful at the Olympics, and we're here now, heading into Rio. I've learned so many lessons over my time. I think that if I didn't crash at the World Championships prior to London, but there's no way I would have won that race. Same at the Olympics. I was, again, competitive and capable of being successful, but there's no way I would have. I hadn't won any major races at that point. I've been world champion in 2013. I've won numerous World Cup races now and I think that I've been able to do that off the back of you know 20 years of BMX. I love racing now. I had a fantastic year last year. I won obviously three World Cups. Yeah, that's like a dream season for me and if I can sort of emulate that, head into Rio and perform to my absolute best and what will be will be.